Okay, we're going to show you how to use the dynamics using the PBR textures in Visor T4 Fusion Rendering Engine. Normally in Visor T3, you won't be able to achieve such realistic looks, but with Visor T4, you can kind of cheat a little bit and get some realistic looking uh, flags and or banners. As you can see here, we'll just scale this up that you get the textures and everything within the flag to see. So let's get started. I'm just going to close this scene and we'll start fresh from a new scene and I have a background here we'll load up and what I want to do first is go into our scene settings and set up our environment and our rendering settings so first I'm going to come down here into our rendering into Visor T4 and I'm going to change this from classic to fusion now I need to go back into my scene settings and since we are using the Visor T4 Fusion rendering engine, we need an environment map. So I'm going to go into my server, go into my images, and look for an environment map. If you don't have one, you can download one from the internet, you can buy one from the internet, but there are specific textures that provide an RGB environment, and we need to drop this into our environment. I just selected a random one here, and when we drag it in there, you don't see nothing, nothing's going to happen. So we're going to leave that as is for the moment. We're going to jump back into our plugins and we're going to go into this folder here called Dynamics. And you can use this little drop down to select all and you'll see the folder there. And Dynamics contain the cloth, the cloth flag, and the flag. We can use any one of these. I'm just going to drag the flag up into my scene tree and you can see when we do that, that it represents a waving flag. Now, if you do need to know what any of these plugins do or these dynamics do, the cloth, the cloth flag, or the flag, we have an individual video on each one of these that you can check out. For now, we need to start texturing this. So I'm going to go into my server and I'm going to look for my folder here where I have a couple of flag images. And I have one here. And normally what we would do is drag it onto our container like that but since we are using the visor t4 rendering pipeline this no longer will work so i'm going to get rid of that image on that container and instead i'm going to right click on it and i'm going to say add material fusion and once i do that you can see what happens to our flag here let's scale it up a little bit and re reposition this so we'll be able to see that right in our screen okay so this black texture type is coming from the environment map that we put into our scene. Now what we need to do is go over to our container and when we click on our PBR icon it opens up a whole new list of container empty containers here. So that means we need to go back into our images and start using some textures. However we need to use specific type of textures and we have some PBR textures physical base rendering textures here that we can use. You can see I have a couple of folders here. Now these may not be cloth and or like uh, textures specifically for a flag. In fact, none of them are. There's metal, plastic, porcelain, and I've got a couple other like concrete slash metal textures in here. I'm just going to use these and randomly experiment with them and see how they look anyway. So what I want to do first is actually go back up into my flags folder. And I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I'm going to take my flag and I'm going to drag this onto my base color in my PBR textures. And again, we don't notice anything when that happens. Now I'm going to come down to my PBRs and I'm just going to try this first folder. It's got some stucco and or concrete type patterns in here. Not that you would use that on a flag, but it will provide us enough enough texture so that we'll be able to see what's happening here so we'll try this one out and what I want to do is take each one of these textures and drag it into a box so here's my normal map I want to drag that into there here's a height map and we can drag that height map into there there's a displacement so we can drop drop that into one of the areas and we have another color here maybe we can drag that into there. For whatever reason you want to get rid of that image, if you drop it in there and it doesn't look so well, what you can do is just hit that little reset button right there and get rid of it. What I want to do in the meantime is actually add some lighting to this so that we'll be able to see it. So that means I'm going to need a new container and I can add a new container with this little G button up here and this is going to be our light. So if I want to go ahead and rename that, I will. I'm going to right click on it. And I want to say add light fusion. We have a choice between 
area, spot, directional, or point. I'm going to go ahead with the area. And once I do that, you can see that it creates this light here. Now I have my bounding box on. So I'm going to hit the transformation axis editor in my light. And I'm going to move this position back or towards us away from the flag in Z position. And you can see when I do that how it's taking on the texture of the flag here. And what we're going to do is go into the light and we're going to intensify it a bit so I can see the flag a little bit better. And we'll adjust the diffuse intensity just a bit too. So now you can see when we come into the flag that we're picking up a bit of the textures from our PBR materials down here. Let's scale this up a little bit. And you can see how that texture is coming through on our cloth or our flag here. And if you rotate it around, you can see a little bit better. So we could go into our PBR materials here. And if you wanted to try a whole other set of textures, you could do that. Lastly, we have our flag here. So we could go into the flag and then adjust the settings that we need. And if you needed to reset any of these, such as the height, you could just double click on that little height and it will reset it. So let's lower it down a little bit. And then we have our options here for wavelength, which we can increase or decrease. And you can see how it kind of spreads that wave out. We also have the wave speed that you can increase or decrease. And then the turbulence speed, which also goes into negative numbers. We also have a Y stretch and a tessellation for the X and the Y.